hey guys, Reed here. Today I want to show you a useful way to organize the columns within a table, plus add valuable notes for columns that contain custom logic or are modified in any way during the Power Query import process. These techniques are especially useful when you're building models that get used as shared datasets within the Power BI service. So let's hop into Power BI Desktop and get started. So this time there won't be anything to show as far as the report page goes, but if you take a look over at my fields list here on the right, you'll notice that my table here has two folders currently. Now if you're curious about the folder design and how these are added and some more important details about subfolders and other stuff, I actually did a video specifically on that that I'll link you to here, but otherwise I want to show you how I created the logic columns and system columns and their purpose. So all of the columns in this table have been split up into one of these two. System columns are the columns that are coming directly from the source, whether or not that's SQL, SharePoint, uh, what have you. These are the columns that are just standard system columns, no modifications whatsoever. And the logic columns here are any columns that I have edited, created, modified, or done some type of transformation or modification to using the Power Query editor. So that way it's very clear that these columns did not come from the original source. They were added by me for some business need or logic and then put into the model itself. And even better, if you hover over this, you'll notice that the actual description here shows the logic. So that's something I just copied and pasted from the query editor. Um, and in this case, that's just the if column statement, um, just giving some standard business logic in there. Um, but what I typically do with logic columns is I just write out the description of whatever uh, the actual logic is occurring in there. So people are very clear about the output that is being provided uh, based on the business logic from the client or the end user. And as a recommended practice as well, I actually do that as well with the DAX measures. Whatever the actual formula is in here, I also put that in the, to the description. That way when they hover over this in a connected data set, they can see what the underlying measure is. Um, now this one, um, unfortunately, just the way the things are currently set up, you do need to come to this page and then you have to actually copy it from here one at a time and then come over to the model view to be able to actually add it in there. So if I select page views, you see the description is in here and all that was was a copy paste from the other view. Um, I hope at some point in the model view, I'm able to see both the measure and the descriptions so I can quickly copy and paste them between each other. But for now, it is a little bit painfully slow to do it one at a time, um, but it is a really good recommended practice that I like to have. And if I open up my data tab here, then we can see the logic and the system columns in there. And all I've done on these is again, there's that description just describing what the, the logic is doing for that column. And then I created the display folder, in this case, for logic columns, and then all of these ones are in system columns. And that's really about it. This is something I've started to do more recently, especially now that more and more clients are wanting shared data set models, where a lot of people will do ad hoc reporting off of this. But this organization really helps make a much clearer picture um, when people are consuming this information, um, especially knowing where the data is coming from or uh, what custom logic might get, be getting applied uh, to the model by the, myself, the developer, or anybody else who's building these out. Um, especially when the consumption is happening um, with a lot of other analysts doing ad hoc reporting on top of this single kind of golden data set. And that about covers it. If you liked this video, please click or smash that like button below. And if you have anything to say about this video or have a suggestion for a future video, please add that down to the comments below. And if this is your first time to my channel or you want to see more of these awesome videos, please click that subscribe and notification button. And otherwise, I will see you in my next video.